Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be revisiting two of the DIY Nintendo projects that I've done recently on the channel. So specifically here on the left, I have the Open Tendo. And so this is an open source project that allows you to completely recreate the original front loader NES using as many new parts as possible with the exception of the uh, CPU and the graphics chip, the PPU. Over here on the right, this is the Necessity. This is made by Low Budget, and it's also a complete recreation of the front loader, but it has some extra features, um, including adjustable sound, and it's a little bit easier to make this because it's a DIY kit that really comes with everything that you need. So, uh, I did both of these projects. They were a lot of fun, but I want to come back to them because there were a couple of things that I wanted to do to make these things even better than they currently are. So, one thing is that I... With the Open Tendo, it had an original RF modulator, which uh, also handled the power, and I was never really happy with that. I wanted something that was completely new and used as few old parts as possible. And so there was an open source project that I found, um, although it wasn't complete, it had some errors. So I've learned a little bit since then about PCB design, and I made a few minor changes to make this operational. And not only that, I've combined it with an NES RGB mod, which allows you to have the highest quality video, namely RGB, um, coming out uh, right over here from this port back here. So we're gonna be going over this. And then secondly, we're going to be adding RGB to the necessity so that I can also get the best possible video out of this system as well. Okay, so let's get started. But first, let me take a couple of seconds for a word from the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. PCBWay is my favorite manufacturer of prototype PCBs of all kinds. They currently have a contest going where if you send in PCB design tutorials, you have the chance to win some really cool prizes. So I highly recommend checking out the link in the video description that leads directly to the contests. So if you've got PCBs to manufacture, whether they're ones that you've designed or ones that you find online, I definitely recommend giving PCBWay a try. Okay, so back to this week's project. All right, so I'm gonna start with the discussion of the Open Tendo because I actually did have a whole set of videos of me installing this power module, testing it, making sure it worked, and then doing an RGB mod. But sadly, when I upgraded cameras, somehow my entire SD card got formatted and I lost all of the footage, and I'm very sorry for that because I really did want to show you guys that. But at least I can show you the finished product and I can show you how it works. So this is an open source power module that I found on GitHub and it's made by a guy who goes by the name of Spinx. And what's cool about it is it has a lot of nice features. So it um, allows you to get composite video and audio from the NES RGB, so that's what that is here. It's got an eight pin DIN, so you can use this to um, send out the RGB signal from the NES RGB and that's a very common method of, um, of doing it but it's not the only method. You can see here, there's a whole set of pins over here. This is for a Super Nintendo um, multi-out. So you could desolder a multi-out from say a broken Super Nintendo or you could potentially buy it and you could um, put it in over here. And you could also put that instead of these composite video ports and that would give you all of the video signals that you want. Um, you'll notice here it has a three-way switch so this three-way switch can be used to change the palette, and that's exactly what I have. So the three different palettes on the NES RGB go straight to this switch over here. You can see a whole bunch of multicolored wires here. That's actually coming from the NES RGB board on the opposite side, so that sends all of that in. So, so this basically replicates the original power circuit, and so it, it, um, it regulates the incoming voltage down and uh, to the proper five volts and uh, it replicates the original schematic that's in the Nintendo front loader. So that's really nice. Um, let me flip it around and I can show you some more options. Okay, so you can see that there's actually quite a lot of stuff going on over here as well. So there's a whole section of components here. This is for using, not using an NES RGB, but just trying to get native composite video. I found that this did not work. Um, my assumption is that it didn't work because this transistor isn't the right kind of transistor. Again, I didn't modify this. This is from Spinx. This is the original design. Um, but I'm hoping that somebody can take a look at this and improve it so that you could potentially use this circuit board on a stock Nintendo and just get good composite video out of it. That would be awesome. Um, but for the purpose of using it in combination with RGB, it's great because um, basically all you have to do is just set a couple of jumpers. So you have to tell the you have to basically set a jumper here, here, and here. See where it says R mono, 
um, and then audio external and video external. Setting jumpers there um, basically allows you to use the NES RGB for audio and video and gives you mono sound um, coming out of the left and right channels. And then uh, there's also two jumpers to set over here as well and that just has to do with what happens with these jacks. So you want left channel audio coming out or uh, out of out of this one right here and then video is going to come out of this one here. So that's just what I've done here by setting these jumpers. So there's there's a lot of jumpers. It's in this little box area here and here but um, you know, it's pretty intuitive if you look at the schematics and if you follow kind of the design that I did over here. So what was wrong with this thing? Well, there were two things that were wrong. One was that the the, the vias that were supposed to be connected to ground were not. So they were just floating. Um, so I had to figure out how to connect all of those vias to the ground plane using um, some PCB design software, which was relatively new for me. I've never tried that before. The other thing is that the input and ground on these jacks was flipped. So I believe this is supposed to be the video signal, and then these guys here are supposed to be ground, but for whatever reason they were flipped. So I had to undo that. Um, what else can I tell you about this? So just like a regular Nintendo, you can either use the stock AC power supply or you can use a DC, DC voltage power supply like, uh, for example, a Sega Genesis Model 1 power supply will also work with this. Um, so just like a stock Nintendo, you can use a linear voltage regulator and you can take the incoming voltage and you can regulate it down to 5 volts. Uh, and that would go right over here. But, and I did that for a while, um, and that works perfectly fine. But I thought about it some more, and I decided I wanted to put something in here that was even better. So what I did was, instead of installing a linear voltage regulator, I installed a Recom 7805-01.5. So this is a drop-in replacement for a linear voltage regulator, but it's a switching uh, power uh, regulator. So what's nice about this Recom, um, voltage regulator is that it runs very, very cold. It doesn't need a heat sink at all. Um, and it's expensive. It's maybe like a $10 component, so that's not fun. But I wanted to do that just to make this thing run as cool and as efficiently as possible. So you can either use this Recom or you can use a 7805 and it'll work just fine with this board. Uh, lastly, I just wanted to mention that I did get these boards uh, through my sponsor, PCBWay, and I have to say the service was super fast. I mean, I wasn't expecting that after I placed my order that I'd get my stuff from China in less than a week. Um, and everything was, you know, very seamless with them, very easy to use their interface to upload your design and um, to dial in all the options. I wanted my PCBs to be black, so it matched my uh, Open Tendo. And so, yeah, within about a week or so, I got my, my PCBs. I have a couple more of these left, and um, it worked perfectly. So I'm going to use these remaining ones to try to see if I can figure out why the composite video circuit doesn't work. And like I said, I'm pretty sure it's the transistor because all of these resistors match the original schematic. So we'll see how that goes. But anyhow, let me show you how the NES RGB is connected up to the board. So installing an NES RGB in an Open Tendo is extremely easy because the PPU was already socketed. So all I had to do was just add in the headers and then solder the PPU to the NES RGB. And then once that was done, I had to tap in audio. So I have um, the pins one and two of the CPU tapped in over here and that brings in the standard audio. And of course, I also wanted expansion audio as well. So to do that, I added a 1K resistor right over here and then uh, tied that into a 47K resistor, which then goes over to, where is it, to jumper 5 right over here. So that gives you Japanese expansion audio that is compatible with the EverDrive, and that's exactly what I wanted for myself because I use my EverDrive all the time, especially for playing import games. And then from there, you can see I have all of the video signals coming in right over here. And very conveniently, there's a nice little spot right here where they can all come in. And it's all very clearly marked and labeled. So I'm sorry I couldn't do an actual demonstration of installing this, but it was a very easy installation. And I've had this thing for a couple of weeks now, and I have played the hell out of it. I've run through games through completion. I let it run for almost the entirety of a week nonstop with no issues, no overheating, no problems. So... I can say that this kit absolutely does work with um, an NES RGB. It does not work with a stock system, though. You have to add RGB in order to use this. And I'm hoping at some point this can be improved. So I am going to put this up on GitHub so that people can make this PCB as well, and they could potentially use this in combination with NES RGB. 
Okay, so now that we're all set with the OpenTendo, let's turn our attention towards the necessity. So adding NES RGB to the necessity is pretty simple because one of the biggest challenges is, of course, um, if you're talking about a real original NES, is removing the PPU. And of course, in our case, that's already happened. This was already removed from a Nintendo, and I made a point of installing a machine pin socket here because I knew I was going to come back to this and add RGB. So on this side, all that we really need to do is proceed with an NES RGB installation and add in these headers. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. Before we go there, the first thing that we need to do, and this is also specified in the necessity guide, is we need to remove a few components that are part of the original composite video circuit. So we need to get rid of this 220 microfarad capacitor. We've got to get these two resistors out of here, and we also have to pull out this transistor right here. All right, so now that those four components are removed, we're actually done. We're ready to install the NES RGB. So from here on, I'm gonna be proceeding pretty much like I would if I was using a standard Nintendo. The only difference is that I'm not gonna be bothering with adding sound into the NES RGB. I'm gonna use the native sound circuit from the necessity because I like the fact that I can adjust the sound so precisely here. All right, so we're gonna start by just installing these headers. All right, so now that a lot of the soldering is done on the NES RGB, the next thing that we need to do is just start making connections between the NES RGB and this little board here. This comes with the necessity kit and it allows you to install S-Video and it also lets you install RGB. And you can see there's very nice little pads right here that let you connect everything up. So uh, I'm not gonna personally bother with S-Video because I'm not gonna use it. I barely have any monitors that use S-Video. It's not really worth it to me. Uh, but I am gonna connect up composite video. And so to do that, what it makes it very simple. You can see over here, there's a pad labeled V and that's composite video. So all I'm gonna do is just run a wire from this point here to this little point over here, which is labeled C on the board. This is composite video out. And so since I've disconnected the internal composite circuit, I'm gonna tap in over here to send that composite out to the jacks on the power board. Okay, so now that that's finished, we're also going to close off a couple of different jumpers. One jumper is J3. This is for power. Okay. J5 over here is for NTSC because this is not a PAL board. This is an NTSC setup. And we're also going to close off J8. And this is telling the board to use composite sync, C-Sync, instead of uh, TTL level sync. All right, so now that that's all set, let's go ahead and start soldering in some more connections. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is drill a hole for the eight pin mini din, and I'm gonna position it like right about here. There's plenty of space here, and the plastic can withstand, you know, the pressure of insertion and removal of cables and all that. So like right about here seems to be decent. So to do that, I'm gonna be using a stepper drill. I'm just gonna hold things down and keep my hands steady and go from there.
All right, so now RGB is fully installed on the necessity. And so uh, just briefly, I just wanna explain a few things that I did that I didn't kind of discuss on camera yet. So all of these wires here, this is video, five volts and ground, and those all go to the usual places on the NES RGB. And I kind of bundled them together with a little zip tie just to make it all organized. This is left and right channel audio, and those can be very easily tapped in right over here. So there's a little via for left and right, and they're labeled as L and R, so you just gotta solder in on this side, and then on this side here, it goes to the jack, and that's all there is to it. Um, and then the final three wires that you can kind of see tucked in under here, those go to the pallet switch, and that lets me choose between two different pallets. All right, so let's go ahead, plug this thing in, and then test it out, and we'll demonstrate RGB on both the Open Tendo and the Necessity. All right, so we are back, and first thing I wanted to do was just show you the Open Tendo. So as you guys can hear, I'm playing the Japanese version of Castlevania 3, and this is a game that uses the VRC6 chip, which adds an extra two sound channels. So for those of you that know the North American game, you'll hear a very clear difference. So, so yeah, I, I can tell you I've had the Open Tendo for weeks now uh, with the RGB mod and I've been putting it through its paces and so that new par power supply module board that I modified and fixed really works perfectly. I've never had any kind of problem playing any kind of game. Um, what I also really like about it too is that it's a no-cut solution so it replaces the spot where the RF modulator used to be. And so yeah, you can see it's running perfect. Um, let's go ahead and switch over to the necessity and see if that RGB mod is working perfectly. Okay, so we're back now with the necessity and you can see that the RGB mod was installed successfully and it looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, I tried out the pallet switch, that works out great too. And so this can easily be connected up using RGB cables directly to something like the open source scan converter and that's what you're seeing right now. Um, this game is the Famicom Disk System version of Metroid. So it's another game with expansion audio and has extra sound channels. And you can hear it sounds very different than the original Nintendo version. It's got a great sound to it. But um, yeah, the, oh, the, the necessity sound, I think, really is exceptional. I, I think it's amplified a little bit louder than the Open Tendo. And the stereo effect is really cool as well. So, I mean, I, I really like both. I'm glad I don't have to choose between one or another because I have both and I can enjoy them. All right, guys, so that's it. I hope you guys found this interesting. And uh, if you're considering getting an Open Tendo or a Necessity, then at least you know that it's totally possible to get the highest quality video out of those systems and also get really exceptional sound as well. So if you like this kind of content, consider subscribing to the channel. I have videos out every Friday where I repair stuff or modify stuff. And then of course, if you've got consoles that need to be repaired or modified, you can always reach me directly at oneuprestorations.com. Okay guys, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.